okay so uh, thank you once again and i welcome you to this talk on uh, statistical validation of machine learning algorithm so you look at the title of the talk uh, and you know it, it's sort of quite general so uh, although i as dr amit said i work in the areas of uh, multimedia signal processing and that was sort of you know tangentially uh, related to this conference so what i thought was uh, i'll i'll try to give you uh, some general ideas and some general principles that should be applicable to almost all domains including you know domains in bioscience bioengineering medical imaging and, and and things like that so so the talk is going to be uh, quite general right so the conference is being held because we are in the era of machine learning right so you you look at you know almost everywhere and and we have machine learning i have listed down some areas here uh, these may be not, may not be even 10% of what's you know going on in the community but anyway you know multimedia signal processing computer vision game informatics medical imaging bioinformatics drug discovery physics and you name it i mean almost no area is untouched by machine learning these days right and uh, in this talk what i wanted to focus was on what are the implications of you know so much of research happening in you know these areas and and you know what are the implications of that so of course there are several implications theoretical implications practical implications but then the one that i uh, sort of wanted to address was this uh, multiplicity of a few things so multiplicity of data sets of algorithms and also use cases so because a lot of people are working in you know several application domains what we find is there are uh, let's say more than one data sets for each and every application right likewise we have a plethora of multi machine learning algorithm ml is for machine learning so machine learning algorithms there are like more than 10 for a problem if you look at object recognition and things like that you might have even you know 30 40 algorithms currently right and and likewise we have a lot of use cases or or application scenarios in these different domains so what has happened is because of uh, you know so much of happening in this uh, in this uh, machine learning area and its application in so many domains we have had this multiplicity and so what is the implication of this well as i said there are many implications the one that i wanted to focus was how do we really compare two or more machine learning methods in an application now this question might sound uh, i mean sort of innocent and it might look trivial but actually it's not you know there are a few aspects that go into you know comparing machine learning algorithms and you know really uh, drawing conclusions out of that so this is the question that uh, i would like to focus on although not completely but at least a few aspects of this question is what i would like to focus so this is the question that we we really want to address how do we really compare uh, let's say two or more machine learning algorithms uh, for an application let's say face detection or uh, you know sequence analysis and and things like that i mean the application is is not really uh, a constraint here uh, as i said the principles that i'm sort of going to discuss they are quite general purpose right so when we talk of comparison of machine learning algorithms Uh, there are a few aspects that that would you know come to our mind and the first one i i believe would be prediction accuracy right so as i mentioned there prediction accuracy and i have just taken a very artificial example there ml1 means there is some machine learning algorithm one uh, let's say it achieves 89.6% accuracy again accuracy could be classification regression or or you know it could be a mix of both and then i have it an ml2 which is achieving 88.2% accuracy right and these are the sort of numbers that you see in a, in a lot of studies and in a lot of papers right and and what we want to understand is does ml1 really perform better than ml2 right i mean prima facie yes because it is having higher accuracy so we would sort of you know be inclined to conclude that that is the case uh, but then uh, there are a few more things that we should consider before really making those conclusions so prediction accuracy is of course probably the most widely used aspect Uh, of comparing to machine learning algorithms but then there are few others uh, the second is generalization ability so this generalization ability is probably a term which is you know widely used in machine learning community uh, we can even call it learning ability so basically what it means is uh, has it really learned what what has the machine learning algorithm really learned what it was supposed to learn right so for example 
we take a simple example uh, of face recognition and let's say the, the algorithm is giving you nice results and we, we, we want to understand did it really understand to you know recognize faces and how did it perform so well okay so that's what uh, we mean by learning ability or generalization so basically it might be performing quite well on a let's say a set of 1000 images but then can we guarantee that on 1000 first image it's actually going to perform as well well actually there is no guarantee right so this is uh, one problem you know which is of course widely acknowledged in the machine learning community and in fact it's not just a problem of generalization it's also a problem of quantifying that right so can we can we quantify this i mean can we give a number maybe let's say from uh, 0 to 100 that this particular algorithm has you know 80% generalization the other has only 20% and things like that right so these are actually uh, much more uh, ambitious goals i would say we, we are not there yet but ideally we would you know want something like that right so in general we would look at generalization ability of a machine learning algorithm the third aspect is interpretability so as uh, some of the previous speakers had you know alluded to alluded to this uh, dr pravin in particular was uh, you know talking about interpretability so basically this is uh, the the debate you know white box versus black box models right so white box uh, it simply means that we sort of understand what are the factors that it is taking into account to explain a decision on the other hand black box models are uh, not amenable to you know such scrutiny Uh, and most of the models that we have currently in use uh, basically neural networks svms and of course you know deep learning which is uh, quite popular these days all of them are unfortunately black box models so the interpretability is an issue there and again this is a uh, aspect that is quite widely acknowledged in the community uh, but then i just wanted to put that on record so this is the uh, third aspect the final is actually uh, is it amenable for deployment so uh if you are looking at it from an uh, engineering perspective where we really want to deploy a system so if i am going to uh, develop a, a machine learning system uh, for let's say face recognition i really want to implement it on let's say mobile phone or i want to implement it somewhere so that it's useful right so in that case uh, whether it's uh, whether the you know the implementation costs in terms of hardware and software are going to be within the budget and things like that right so that is also quite important if you have to compare two machine learning algorithms so for example if it is known that one algorithm is uh, really not implementable because you know it just exceeds the budget then you know you you would you would sort of uh, have negative comments about that right even if it performs quite well if you cannot really implement it or deploy it somewhere then you know it would its utility would be really reduced okay so what i have listed is four aspects of comparing machine learning algorithms as we can see Uh, comparing two or more ml algorithms is actually a multi dimensional problem it depends on the use case so it depends on the application and what sort of scenario uh, that we are uh, looking at uh, but again in this talk i am not looking at any specific applications so i have just uh, written down these uh, basic you know aspects that that should be you know really used for comparing ml algorithms one final aspect is uh, this arrow that i have drawn here uh, typically what you find is in most studies and in in most publications prediction accuracy is the one which is you know really the focus you know because most of the time uh, authors and you know scientists talk about you know prediction accuracy and whether you know this algorithm is better than this and and things like that and unfortunately the other aspects are you know not that well highlighted so if you look at generalization ability or learning ability uh, there 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 is much less analysis if you go to interpretability i guess the analysis is even less and you know fewer and fewer authors actually bother to talk about that and lastly this deployment issue i think uh, again this is mainly specific to engineering applications so that is something that is not really uh, discussed in let's say most of the studies however if you were to you know really develop an algorithm for deployment i would say the order should be reverse you know so it should be starting from whether it's really amenable for deployment that should be your first question then you should look at whether you can really explain what's happening there at least partially so i understand that we cannot explain every decision but then is there some sort of interpretability that we can inject into the model then how well does it really generalize and finally we can actually look at prediction accuracy so uh, what i'm trying to convey is that prediction accuracy should be one of the aspects and not the only aspect for actually comparing two 
machine learning algorithm so uh, this is you know one of the messages that i wanted to give because uh, quite a lot of times this prediction accuracies and things like that uh, they get the most attention and other aspects uh, are sort of you know not really addressed that well so i i just want to sort of you know uh, focus on those aspects so in this talk i'm going to focus on the first two aspects which is uh, prediction accuracy and learning ability uh, these two again uh, we we could speak about them uh, in terms of specific applications but then uh, uh, since this talk was supposed to be you know positioned in a more generic sense we are not sort of you know discussing these two but then let's you know look at the first one so prediction accuracy so here uh, what we'll do is we'll talk about this uncertainty which is the you know main focus of this talk and why do we have uncertainty in data right so we will just talk about the sources of uncertainty and then we'll uh, build up why this uncertainty is is useful to be considered so here's the first point uh, as i mentioned the, the target variable may not be deterministic now uh, i'm i'm referring to supervised learning here which means that we are having a signal or data uh, for for you know let's say that we want to analyze and then we have a corresponding target variable for that right so it could be classification it could be regression right so we have a target for a particular signal and then we have a lots of you know such signals which which we essentially call a, a database right so for example it could be uh, maybe medical imaging so is the tumor present so we could say one or is it absent we could say no but then interestingly there will be many cases where the radiologist or the expert might himself or herself might not be you know sure that uh, whether a tumor is present or not you know this is happens practically you know in a, in a lot of situations so in that case we we should probably have some sort of you know leeway for that so maybe i'm just putting here a arbitrary notation 0.5 you know so that is what really uh, demonstrates uncertainty right and and as i said this really cannot be avoided you know you cannot have a situation where it was only that you know we could have one or zero class but then it would happen in many situations that you have such situations okay uh, informative non informative again uh, we might be looking at image data or video data and and we want to analyze whether this particular image is inf informative for a particular task okay let's say medical diagnosis is this image useful because if it's not useful i would simply discard it so that i need not store it on my hardware and you know i would sort of save Uh, resources and things like that so again we have to decide whether it's informative not informative but again there would be cases where we are not quite sure you know so we we don't know whether it is uh, that image is informative or not informative so that that is the uncertain uh, part of uh, this decision making likewise there can be many examples you know quality ratings uh, basically in multimedia signal processing you have this multimedia quality so there you have a continuous scale so basically uh, a video might be rated as on a scale of you know 1 to 5 i would rate it at 4 somebody might say it's 3.5 right so again there is some sort of uh, disagreement happening between the ratings right and 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 so on you know you could you could have an instrument where there is some sort of uh, tolerance or there could be some sort of error so maybe plus minus delta and things like that so the point is the target variable that we typically look at in supervised machine learning may not be deterministic okay in several applications but then in many applications we simply take it to be deterministic so this is you know one uh, drawback uh, that that we should we should avoid and we should consider uncertainty in the target variable the second point is of course test finite sample um, uh, of test cases so essentially when we are uh, training a machine learning model and then we are testing it uh, because of uh, practical limitations we really cannot you know test it on a infinite number of test cases right so that's not possible so we just take a finite number of you know test images or you know test sequences or whatever and then we just test that and and then we we try to you know conclude you know which algorithm is better and which algorithm is poorer and things like that again because it's a finite sample that we are looking at this would actually uh, bring in uncertainty right that that's what will happen so because it if it's infinite then that uncertainty you know tends to zero otherwise there would always be uncertainty because of a finite uh, number of test cases and finally we will have uncertainty in the predictions also so so basically you have a machine learning algorithm 
it cannot be that it's you know 100% sure that you know it's predicting correctly you know if, if you look at the working there there is a probabilistic model or, or we can look at the you know bayesian inference analysis and things like that and we can actually uh, say okay that's prediction that that has been made by a machine learning algorithm that has a certain uh, error or that may have a certain confidence interval and things like that so what i'm trying to say is when we are trying to predict two or more algorithms we should be careful about uh, these three types of uncertainty that may exist because they are actually going to have implications on the conclusions that you eventually draw so that brings us to the next question why should uncertainty matter so what i have done is i have just uh, taken a couple of examples here to you know illustrate the point and and not go into you know details of that but i hope you know that would be uh, good enough to you know convey the basic idea so here's an example that i have taken again this is from my own research but uh, i think i think the principle can be applied to various areas including 